In this lesson, we'll be discussing the baseline structure and logistics for the GMAT Focus Edition on your official test day. So the exam is going to be available globally, online, and in testing centers in various locations around the world. You're going to assume it's going to take a little under than uh, two and a half hours to complete the entire exam. And you're going to have three customizably ordered 45 minute sections. Those sections are going to be the quantitative reasoning section, the verbal reasoning section, and the data insight section. These can be ordered however you like, and you'll have an option to arrange them to your preference. Ultimately, the order in which you take the sections will be relatively unimportant in terms of your score. There isn't a preferred way to arrange the things, but you want to make sure that you're going with whatever order you've been using in your practice. So if you've been doing the quantitative reasoning first, don't change the order on test day. You'll have a single optional 10 minute break after the first or second section. Once you've used the 10 minute break, it won't be an option further in the exam. You're going to get an unofficial score preview immediately upon completing the exam, whether it's in person or, in, or online. Your official score report is going to be made available in your online account approximately seven business days after you take the test. That score and any score will remain valid for up to five years after you take the exam. You're going to have a maximum of five attempts at the GMAT focus within any 12 month period and you have a maximum of eight lifetime attempts combined online or in person for this exam. Both the online and in-person exam can currently be taken once every 16 days, but you will want to make sure that you review the policies at the website listed for the most current online and in-person GMAT Focus Edition information, because it is always subject to change. Now, the online exam is going to be remotely proctored through Pearson View webcam monitoring. It has to be taken in a secure at home or theoretically in office location, but without distraction. And that's really the key. If you think that you might have distractions with your location where you'd be taking the online exam, you may be better served by taking it in person. It can be unavailable in certain countries at the time of this recording, it is currently unavailable in North, North Korea and mainland China. That again can change, so make sure that you look at the online availability in your specific region. The online exam is also going to provide a digital whiteboard in addition to the physical whiteboard that is allowed for you to produce for yourself. It again, check the specifics on how big the whiteboard can be at the time of your exam, but it's generally a medium sized whiteboard that will be erasable. The accommodations that you can get if you are eligible will be the same online as in person. And one true benefit of the online exam is that it will be available 24 hours a day, seven days a week, pending availability of online proctors. The test center exam is going to give you a five page dry erase spiral laminate notepad for scratch work. And it's kind of unique in that you're not going to be able to erase the actual notepad during your test. So if you need additional note space, you'll actually request another notepad uh, set of sheets if necessary. And if that comes to be the case, try to do it in between sections. So if you find yourself on like the last page or two of that spiral notepad towards the end of a section, just start writing big so that you can ask for additional scratch pad in between the sections. And the test center exam is going to be available only during local test center operating hours. Again, reach out to your local test center to see when those are. Also recognize that generally it does, it has historically taken longer to get an appointment in a testing center than, as opposed to online. Now, one of the new pieces of the GMAT Focus Edition is its question review and edit functionality. The GMAT, however, remains adaptive when in the section, so you now will have unlimited question bookmarking 
but only three answers can be changed. So you can, rather than before where you had to move forward and couldn't return to a question, the GMAT Focus Edition allows test takers to return to problems after they've seen it the first time. Still, however, your performance on an individual question is going to broadly dictate the difficulty of the next question in that section. And because of this, earlier questions are still going to be more impactful on your section score. So the earlier questions have a larger change in degree of difficulty. So you really want to make sure that you're paying attention to them a little bit more specifically. When you get to the end of a section, you will see now a review screen that will allow you to return to your marked questions or any question for that matter, but it will show you which questions you did mark. Now, there are some strategic implications, obviously, for this new feature. You must always engage the question briefly to eliminate impossible options. So what that means is you can't move forward without making a selection. And you, for that reason, want to make sure that you're trying to not just blindly guess to the best of your ability because you only have those three answers that can be changed within a section. So you have to select an answer before moving on. And that's partly because of the ad adaptivity function requiring knowing whether you got a question right or wrong to dictate the difficulty on subsequent questions. You want to always be asking anywhere on the GMAT focus, am I progressing to a solution? Because as soon as the answer is no, you must eliminate, guess, mark, and move on. And that mark piece is the new piece. You're going to say, hey, if I've got time, I'm going to come back to this. But because I only get to change three answers, you're going to have to hold yourself pretty hard to a maximum of two blind guesses for any section, assuming that at some point you're potentially later on in the section going to want to use that mark function again. Now that we understand how the question review and edit functionality works on the GMAT Focus Edition, let's talk about the actual content of the section, starting with the quantitative reasoning which has 21 questions, and each of them are going to be multiple choice, single answer. The content areas are going to be restricted to arithmetic, algebra, and word problems. There is no longer any plain geometry on the quantitative reasoning section of the GMAT focus. Now, your pacing targets within the 45 minute quantitative reasoning section, after seven questions, you should have at least 30 minutes remaining. And the reason for this, even though the earlier questions tend to matter more, is because you have that guess, skip, and return functionality now in the exam. After 14 questions, you need to have at least 15 minutes remaining. It is imperative that you finish, and if need be, you can skip questions up to two of them blindly, but obviously you'd rather just get through all of the problems that you can confidently work through, knowing that you can't change more than three. But you do want to be a little bit more aggressive with your pacing targets within the section now that you have that functionality to skip and return. The verbal reasoning section is going to be 23 questions, and those are going to be approximately 13 reading comprehension problems and 10 critical reasonings. You're going to assume four passages of three to four questions each, and you should only primarily proactively guess, mark, and skip the critical reasoning questions, not the reading comprehension. Because there are no more sentence corrections in the section of verbal reasoning for the GMAT Focus Edition, those reading comprehensions are incredibly important, and you can quickly end up missing three or four in a row if you're not careful. Instead, if you must, go more quickly through the critical reasonings to ensure you finish the section. Now, as far as the pacing goes, it's more based on the question type than where you are in the section here because the order of the questions is obviously to a degree varied. Now, the reading comprehension, you want to be a little bit under two minutes per question on average and about five minutes per passage. And if you extrapolate that to the section, the four passages at five minutes per passage leave you 25 minutes for the 10 critical reasonings or two and a half minutes each critical reasoning. And you're going to have a hard three minute maximum for any critical reasoning, but you want to spend more time on average with the critical reasonings because they just require a more specific attention to detail than your reading comprehensions, especially the subsequent reading comprehensions after you've potentially read up front for a passage of three or four questions. Now, 
the data insights section, the new section of the GMAT focus is going to have 20 questions and five discrete question types. This is where data sufficiency questions are in the new GMAT focus. You're going to also have the four integrated reasoning question types of graphics interpretation, multi-source reasoning, table analysis, and two-part analysis. Approximately 50% of the section are going to be multi-source reasoning and two-part analysis. You want to assume that there will be two three-question multi-source reasoning sets. There are math and non-math scenarios possible, and you will primarily proactively guess, mark, and skip two-part analysis if you're behind pace in the data in insight section. One of the most important aspects to recognize about the data insight section is it, that it is the only section with an interface calculator provided. It's really just for complicated four function arithmetic operations. The math here does not have to be clean as it is likely to be in the quantitative reasoning section. With the data insights section, they may ask you to do say 6,478 divided by 0.13. And the reason they do that is because you have the calculator. Do not forget that the calculator exists on the data insights section. As far as pacing goes, the multi-source reasoning and two-part analysis questions, you want to average about two and a half minutes per question, and you're going to have a hard four-minute max for any of them. The other formats, meaning data sufficiency, graphics interpretation, and table analysis, you want to be spending about two minutes as an average, and that you're going to have a hard three-minute maximum. After 10 data insights questions, you're going to be between 20 and 25 minutes remaining. This is a little bit of a fungible goal because it depends on when you see those multi-source reasoning and two-part analysis questions versus the other types that should take less time on average. And do recognize that, as always in this exam, you can quickly guess, mark, and skip up to two questions if you need to keep pace, knowing that you want to leave at least one return throughout the section if you need it towards the end, knowing that you'll only be able to change your answer on three of the questions. Now, the official scoring, the overall score for the GMAT Focus Edition is going to be combined, and it's a scale of 205 to 805 in 10-point increments. This is to intentionally differentiate it from the legacy GMAT, and your percentiles are going to be approximately 495 for the 25th percentile, approximately 555 for the 50th percentile, and approximately 655 for the 90th percentile. This is quite markedly different from the legacy GMAT where the 50th percentile was pushing a 600 and the 90th percentile was pushing a 700 to 720 when the exam transitioned. So don't expect your GMAT focus score to match your legacy GMAT percentiles. Now, the section scores are going to be on an individual scale from 60 to 90 in single point increments. And every section is included in the single overall score. So your data insights, your quantitative reasoning, and your verbal reasoning sections are all part of that composite 805 scale score. Now, when you report your score, you now can select for your schools to report the scores after the exam. You don't have to choose them prior. But there is no cancellation available, and the GMAC is positioning this as a good thing because you can always choose which scores to send. And I've said to students for years that multiple attempts are not necessarily a bad thing when you are applying to business school. Oftentimes, you can show a level of dedication and perseverance by telling a story of improvement. Now, when you get your score report, you will get a more complex performance insights score, which is going to outline your performance by section and by question type. You're going to also be able to see your performance based on content and fundamental skills for the sections. And you'll have a time management and question review summary. These are not going to be something that is an added cost for the GMAT focus. This is going to be with every administration for every official score. So you'll have more data to go with should you need to attempt the exam again. Now, what should be a good target score? Whatever gets you in your program. And as the GMAT focus is gaining credence within programs, 
you'll want to make sure you take the time to research median scores and ranges at your target schools. Visit the official program websites, email admissions departments, call admissions officers, and of course, while this transition may still be occurring, ensure that they accept the GMAT focus at your program. It is likely that any program that had accepted the GMAT previously will now accept the GMAT focus, but you always want to reach out specifically and confirm not only that they accept it, but what target scores might be, understanding there will be a period of transition between the exams. So those are the basics that you need to understand as you begin working through the GMAT Focus Edition. Make sure that you always stay up to date at MBA.com as well while you're going through this course to prepare for your ultimate high-performance official exam.